It is a beautiful crisp morning downtown Modesto. We are approaching 10th and E Street right now. <clears throat> getting ready to go into the office. I'm just getting to work right now. It's a beautiful morning. If you didn't know, we are just across the street from Caliber Collision. <laughs> so, oh, I ran into Jose's, like our maintenance person. All right, people, thank you so very much for joining us today. I want to invite you to the actual first vlog of the MoCon. You've heard it many times. The beginning of any journey begins with one step, begins with the first step. And this is my first step. This is my first step into this journey of telling you more about the MoCon Theater. MoCon actually stands for the Modesto Conservatory of Music, Art, and Theater. Um, so we have musicians, we have artists, we have actors that come to the MoCon to not only perform, but work on their shows, work on their music, work on um, their art. We're going to go inside. So thank you so very much for joining me today. And uh, let's go. I love how it has like its own like calmness to it, its own vibe. It, it's different every day. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna take them to. I'm gonna take them with me. Okay. I should have the little girl waiting at the door. Look at that. Oh, see, that's what I see every morning when I get to work. <laughs> that's so cute. She can hear me coming. She runs away. Hi, Eddie. Studio. Early morning. Me and Miss Eddie hanging out. Okay. I'll give you some food. Let's have some snacks. You want some snacks? Come on. Come on. Time for your morning snacks. Let's open up here. my morning window I have my tea here have my coffee here and when I mention coffee let me segue right into right across the street from me is a coffee roasting company by the name of Clayton Teas and Coffee right on the corner of 10th and P Street and I can just walk across the street and get like literally crushed beans like right as they are grinding them Cross the street, put it into my pot. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you, it is a beautiful thing. So when that door opens up, when one of those two bay, door, bay doors open up, that means that they are about to make some coffee. And it just smells so good. It reminds me of when I lived in Europe and you'd be around the Marrakesh or something, or you'd be around the marketplace where all the spices, and especially like when I lived in Switzerland, you'd be in downtown Bern and there's these, these, there's these markets where it's just spices and coffees and teas and, and all these herbs, and it's just so, 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 so nice. So it just reminds me of that. And the next thing I know, I open my window every morning and I see and smell fresh coffee, Oh my goodness, look at her. This is her favorite perch. She enjoys jumping up, being on the couch. Being in the window. She likes being on the couch too, but she likes being in the window. All right, so what we got planned today? So we're gonna be, this is my setup for recording. It is so bare. It is very, very simple. I have some music. Sometimes I play the drums to the music and just enjoy myself while the music is playing. Um, many times the, the listener can't hear what I'm playing, so it, it's good. You can just hear the music. You don't have to listen to me play the drums. And then sometimes, hey, 
I want to vibe on some drums. We have guests that come over and um, they're going to be, um, we do interviews. Sometimes somebody wants to play the guitar. We'll do a live, live set. And um, we use a 1080 H, um, HD um, web camera. Just plug it right into my Laptop. So you know, often I want to explain. This is a good. This is a good opportunity for me to explain something. Oftentimes, you'll see me looking down and not like directly into the camera, and that's because I'm reading text. I'm reading um, uh, comments and that people are sending me about listening to the show, um, and it creates an opportunity for me to answer people like in real time about whatever we're chatting about. So while we're listening to music, we can talk we talk about different um current events, things going on in the community of music, art and theater. Um no politics, no religions. Um and the reason why that is is because there's enough of that on everywhere else. So for my show, we generally talk about music, art and theater and how it relates socially how it relates to us internally and how us as artists or even if you are uh, uh, listeners and enjoyers of, of certain artists getting into their psyche and understanding why and how they make the music and the art and 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 play the characters um, that they do so over here I love playing the drums. It is so therapeutic. It, it it just takes me to another place. I am not, by any stretch of any imagination, a professional, air quotes, um, drummer. I, I've been playing since I was a young kid in church, and um, I, I'm a. If anything, I'm a church drummer. If you know, I keep time very well, and I enjoy showing people how to. Um, play the drums not only as a means of um, creativity for musical expression, but also the therapy of it as well to different sounds, different patterns, creating different um, um, rudiments and different um, um, paradiddles for yourself, making up different sounds, being creative and um, utilizing different instruments, different ways and uh, changing the tone out of um, conventional settings uh, for for drums and 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 for percussions and and being and and teaching to be creative and and expansive. So that that's why I enjoy the drums. This one right here was was a was a gift. I say it was a gift because the person asked me to take care of this drum for them while they were moving. And what is it? 15 years later, <laughs> I still have the drum. And usually about once or twice a year, I'll text the person or call them or say, hey, um, I still got the drum. And they're like, yeah, okay, thanks very much. We appreciate it. And I'm like, all right, well. So it's a beautiful gift. This was another gift. This was a gift given to my son from a good friend of mine named Richard Amaradio that just uh, recently uh, contacted me living on the big island in Hawaii, Shaka Ra, so good to talk to you, so good to re reconnect. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get this one right here is uh, a set, it's a Ludwig um, custom maple set that um, was donated for restoration. So we're going to be um, doing some restoration of that um, drum set. And then I have the painting, this right, this is a painting that I did called The Door of Opportunity. Um, there's a lot more about it on my website. And um, it's in 3D, black light. There's some hidden gems that are inside this painting. I hang it like yeah, you see it. For me, that's how I painted it, um, was to be hung this way. But for the buyer, is the sole expression of, of the art and the piece. If they want to use it as a door, they can hang it as a door and use it for opening. I did it as something that hung on a wall. There you are. Um, 
but it's not left up to me. Just some other pieces that are in the works. I have the butterfly that I'm going to do. It's all in wrought iron. You can't tell probably right now, but it's in wrought iron. And then um, I've already traced it to the back panel that it's going to go on. And that panel is going to actually have movement like wings. I had the sick opportunity to get this bed from a good friend of mine. Um, it, it was a apostropedic bed, one of those folding beds. And I was going to use the motor from that. But right at the same time that it happened, um, the, the Rona flexed its wings and um, everything dried up for me. And I wasn't able to make the deal and get the bed. And uh, it would have been perfect opportunity because it, it, they were going to give it to me for get for for free, but I was had to pay for the truck to get it, and it just just didn't work out. Ah. But that's the idea: is to have the wings actually flap, not fast, but definitely some movement. Um, and then this is some other pieces that I did, and we'll get back to that one. That one is like really, I, I brush over this because. This one is like really deep and this is me just getting to work and the name of the painting is I Can't Breathe and um, it, it evolved into Now I Can Breathe and it's this, it's a whole thing. This is part of that series. This was actually the first piece um, in that series. I can, I can't. Now I can breathe. And there's some other things, but yeah. So we have a charcoal table. I just um, put together this charcoal table. So this table right here, not only is it a charcoal um, uh, kitchen countertop, but it also serves as the place where we do like most of the charcoal work. This is some asymmetrical and non-symmetrical work and then this is like uh, a trace that I'm doing from a piece that that my brother did um, for Fillmore Jazz Festival and then this is just in the way that just covers up because see this is charcoal this is the one that I use mostly for like um, drawing in charcoal or using charcoal so I use this so then the cat doesn't walk on it <laughs> Yeah, you get my point. So the next thing you know, I got charcoal all over the place. Um, some custom shoes that I'm doing for my little brother. Um, since the Raiders moved to Las Vegas, I'm redoing some shoes that I had already did. Um, and then these are going to just be a new pair. And then I'm doing some custom work to a... Um, and this is going to be for actually a lamp that I'm going to hear have it have at the studio. It's a symbol that just got mangled just from just use, and it's all broken up, all holy maca flip, as they say. And then I'm going to use the base like this, as, and then the, the light will be in here, and then so this will be all pounded. See, now it's all pounded out. So, yeah, just... My morning walk around the studio, just getting things started. Oh, in fact, I have to do a inventory today uh, for paints. I got some commission work um, for some um, acrylic art that I need to complete. So sometimes my base for my color background, I use um, spray paint. So then that way I don't have to use a lot of acrylic paint brushing. I do all my fading with it. I do all my um, graphic design with it. Like like I did that piece right there. Um, I kind of wanted it more to be like a mixture of tap, tape op, tapeography. Um, my brother, Ronell, shout out to Ronell Roberts up in San Francisco at the um, uh, Shipyards, Hunter Point Shipyards. I couldn't think of the name of the place. Hunter Point Shipyard is where his um, gallery is. And um, go up there, buy some art, see some art. He has a new book out. Um, but yeah, he was doing this thing called um, tapography. And I just, I just enjoyed 
how he made the style and it just made it just it just it just came up. I was like, you know what, I think I'm gonna do that for like my therapy sign. And I do, like sometimes I have to just come in and work on it and just put in like more lining. Um every once in a while I'll just step over and work on it a little bit more. So Oh my gosh, this thing has already been 15 minutes. All right, so this is just this is um, our art table um, for when we have students that come by. This is um, this is a piece that I'm finishing up for a client, and they 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 are just so sweet. They're like, no, 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 don't um, put it away. It's okay. People love seeing it, so it's all good. Just some spatial art that I've done. So, yeah, that's that's the whole studio. That's the that's the whole thing. That's the whole reason why we're here. <laughs>